In this episode of Trying Something New, we are going to share all of our RV must-have tips and tricks that you need to know. We are a family of five that loves adventure, connecting with people, and trying something new. Ah! Try something new every day. Four years ago, we got rid of our house and all of our stuff and moved into an RV full-time to give us the freedom to explore the world. Since COVID shut down international travel, we are back in the RV for more adventures until we get our sailboat sometime in 2021. So remember, life is short. Let's inspire each other along the way and live a life with no regrets. We would love to have you along for the adventure. So hit that subscribe button and let's get ready to try something new. All right, I'm gonna start off. The most important thing to me is an ice maker. Now, we had an ice maker in the fridge originally, the freezer originally, but that fridge died, so we got a new one and we chose not to get the ice maker in the freezer because it just takes up so much space and the freezer is small to begin with, so we figured we'll just get a little portable ice maker and this thing rocks. I think it puts out 20 pounds of ice a day or something like that and I love ice drinks. It's a priority. I don't like buying bagged ice because I like to know that it's filtered water in here. So this little guy is a must have. Next up, we have the map of the USA. We saw it on a bunch of other people's RVs and they fill in the states as they go through them. And I go, you know what, we need to get one of those. So you can order this on Amazon. And as we, we it used to be that we had to spend the night in the state, but it became kind of like, if we just drive through the state, we could put the sticker up. <laughs> So you can make your own rules on how you add a sticker, but the kids love it. They actually, we're in Florida right now, so they are dying to add in these stickers right here. So yeah, this is a really cool thing to have. And it also lets other people ar around you say, oh, wow, well, like you've been to the same state. It's a little, little icebreaker. <laughs> Oh wait, we got more here. Let me get another one going here. Okay, we got the bongo. Oh wait, we got another one over here. We got a ukulele hanging up here. Someday I'm gonna learn how to play some music. All right, one thing you gotta have in an RV is a overwhelming amount of instruments. This is only about half of what we have. Someday we're actually gonna sit down and put forth the effort, energy, and time it takes to learn how to master these things. I really, really, really wanna learn how to play because I love creating music but I just don't know how. So <laughs> one day we're gonna sit down and figure it out. But if you are an RV, a must have is some instruments because someday you'll sit down and learn how to play them. And we have a lot. This is only about half of what we have, so. All right, our next tip is a water filtration system because we don't like using a lot of plastic and definitely don't wanna have that our source of water and you definitely don't want to drink, drink out of the tap. So we installed this water filter system. It's called Frizz Life. So we used to have the Brita system, but the replacement cartridges were like over $100 each, which was actually it, two times you replace them, it's like more than the whole system itself. So we found this one, and each cartridge is I think 20 bucks or so to replace, which makes it so much more cost effective, and you have great water. So something that's really important to us and a, a non-negotiable is staying fit on the road. So these bands right here are great. You can get a great workout. You can do a lot of different exercises. You can strap these things on anywhere. And we always throw these in our suitcases when we travel international, and then we can get our workout in no matter where we are. We also have a complete full gym setup over here, and we have another video for that that I'll link up above, but you can see how we stay fit on the road. But definitely get your bands on. All right, next up we have a Wi-Fi hotspot. I know that we struggled with Wi-Fi for a long time before we realized there were these hotspots available. So when you are at campgrounds, some of them do offer Wi-Fi, but it's very minimal, it's not high speed. If you need to get any work done, it's pretty much non-existent. So our friend did some research and found this Netgear Nighthawk is super awesome. And what we did was we got an AT&T SIM card through eBay. So it's like a third party seller with the AT&T cards. Um, I love it because there's no contract. You're not locked into AT&T. Um, I think we've spent like 80 bucks a month for the SIM card and no issues here. We have four bars of connectivity. We're able to run all of our devices, pretty much like eight devices sometimes at a time. I don't know why there's so many, but <laughs> it tells you how many devices are on it. Um, so yeah, if you have Wi-Fi issues, it's a struggle. We looked into the whole, 
extender, connector, this and that, stuff you hook up to the top of the RV to, I don't know, expand the Wi-Fi that's in the area. That was just too complicated. We can never figure it out. If you have researched Wi-Fi situations for your RV, you might have gone down that rabbit hole and we can never just figure it out or commit. So this thing has been amazing. We take it with us wherever we go and it works. Above and beyond. Let me pause this for a minute. It's kind of loud. It's kind of loud in here. Let me pause this for a sec. All right, so one thing that I absolutely love is loud music and a surround sound system. And I told Sandy, when we get the RV, I'm putting in a surround sound in here. So if you come up in here, this is where our surround sound is located up here. We won't get into that. It's kind of messy right now, but there's five speakers in here. And the really great thing about that is before we put in the surround sound, when I was driving and the kids be watching a movie, it gets loud in here. So you got to turn it up all the way and the speakers are underneath here. And so it would be so loud up here while I was driving that I couldn't hear anything going on back here. So what I did is hook up the surround sound and I put five speakers around the whole back of the RV. And now when they're watching a movie, all the music is back here and it actually gets really loud and it's great. So if you do have an RV, it is worth investing in a surround sound. Let's get back to the music. Another one of my favorites is the Instant Pot. It took me a while to hop on the Instant Pot bandwagon, but once I did, I realized what the whole craze was about. We are not much of meal preppers, but once we got this, I was like, my life just became so much easier. We can make vegetarian chili, a huge batch of it, and so we have it for days. Jimmy, me, Jimmy, and Skylar all eat that kind of stuff, so that has been huge. Um, it's, I love being able to make big batches of stuff opposed to every single meal we got to figure out what we're making i'm just not built that way <laughs> so this really had simplified my life and is a great addition to an rv now we're going to talk about backsplashes so you know rvs don't typically come with a modern feel it's more like grandma grandpa's house and so for us we wanted to have that more modern edge once we remodeled everything we didn't want just a white wall back there so Instead of doing the actual stones for a backsplash, which you know it gets heavy and you know the RV, you're always concerned about the weight. So these are stickers, which is amazing because it really looks like a backsplash. But they were peel off stickers. I think they come in like 12 by 12 sections. Jimmy just stuck them all on and now it's a modern kitchen. All right, so we got five people in our family. So that means we got five bikes. As you can see, we need somewhere to put those bikes when we travel. So we got this giant bike rack off of Amazon. I'll put a link below. I think it was 120 bucks, something like that. But it has been amazing to put all these giant bikes on because it's a lot when it's moving day. Put them on, strap them down, put a ratchet strap down. Now I can only fit four on here. So this little guy, we just throw it in the minivan on travel day. As soon as we get there, we pull it out and ride off into the sunset. So if you know anything about living in an RV, you know that space is hard to come by. So anything collapsible that you can get is huge, or maybe not huge, but this is our collapsible colander. I love this because we store a lot of our pots and pans in our oven, and so if everything was its full size, I would not be able to have a lot of the stuff that we want. And so they have collapsible bowls, collapsible, you know, like salad bowls and stuff. You can collapse them all down into each other, which is a huge space saver which is a must when you live in an RV. All right, I don't know if this sign is for us or for the kids, but usually there's kids out here at play. I don't know where they are right now. They're out riding their bikes somewhere, but there is a lot of people that go really fast through the RV park. So it's really cool to have one of these signs and you put it on, just let people know. There might be some little unpaying attention kid running out from a car or something like that. So I don't know, I gotta go find these kids somewhere. Okay, now we're gonna get a little luxurious here. <laughs> If you do have an RV or anything like the original faucet that we had, you literally couldn't do the dishes without water spraying everywhere because it was like this. And so if you had more than two bowls or a plate in there, the water would go everywhere. You had to go under the faucet. So this guy right here is my must have. <laughs> I wanted a nice big faucet. You can pull it out. You can spray. This for me was, was my luxury purchase. Something that a lot of houses have that RVs don't is a junk drawer or a place to store your pens and you know, whatever they could just grab when you need it. So we found these little guys, couldn't believe it. I was like, we're getting those. 
is these pull out drawers for under the table. Now ours, I don't know, I, it's, it's full of junk because <laughs> that's what happens with these kids. They just, it's supposed to be for a couple of loose pens, post-its, whatever, but there's everything in it under the sun in there. So yours doesn't have to look like that, but it is a huge storage saver for stuff you just want to quickly grab. As you can see here, we really like to personalize our space. We like to get momentums from all over the country, all over the world, different places that we've been. Ben, Ben, I said that because we got Ben Tang on here. Different places that we've been. And we like to stick them on the wall. And when you're in a moving vessel, you gotta make sure that they stick pretty good. So we get this uh, indoor mounting tape that says it can hold 15 pounds. It's double-sided tape. You stick a couple pieces on the back of whatever you wanna hang up, peel off the sticky tape and stick it on there. We put this stuff up here over four years ago and it's still here and uh, no problem. So definitely a must have in the RV is some double-sided sticky tape. Okay, do you know what these things are? It looks like a puzzle piece right now, but these are tablecloth holders for your picnic table. I was so excited when I saw these because I like to put a tablecloth on the picnic table outside, but it was always blowing up and I would tape it underneath and I was just, somehow it just would never stay. And so when I discovered these, I was, I was so excited. You can get them at the dollar store, but there's a set of four and you literally, I don't have a tablecloth right now, otherwise I'll show you, but you just put it over the edge. This is for the top, clip it under the table and voila, your tablecloth is perfect. I just thought I had to throw that one in there. Okay, another thing is humidity bags. We are now in Florida and never experienced this before when we were in Vegas, cause it's super dry. But when you come to Florida, climate is complete opposite, very humid, very moist, which is a bad thing for an RV. So we were introduced to humidity bags where you put them in the, under the sinks and all the little places and it, you will be shocked that they, how much water they absorb from the area. So that is something that is a must depending on where you're at and a dehumidifier machine, which is actually I'm ordering right now because being here in Florida, we wake up in the morning, the windows have condensation all over them, the rug feels wet, like <laughs> it's a whole new world out here in Florida. So a dehumidifier is huge because the last thing you want is mold and water buildup in areas that you don't even realize it's happening. I, I read a couple of people online saying that they had mildew under their mattress, behind the couch. You don't even think about that kind of stuff, but it's a real thing. So make sure if you're in that kind of a climate, you take care of that. All right, one thing that makes us feel real fancy and nice in this old vintage RV is these super plush stair covers right here. Pick these up on Amazon, you zip time underneath, and every time you walk inside, your feet go, thank you. Okay, a new thing that we just purchased, which I think is amazing for RVers, especially if you RV full-time, is a Thousand Trails membership. Now, we started RVing five years ago, and we were based in Vegas a lot because of our business was based in Vegas. And the Thousand Trails there, we had checked it out and we weren't too keen on staying there. So we never even gave the Thousand Trails membership another thought again. But now that we are in Florida, a lot of the RV parks are within that system, like the Encore Parks and Thousand Trails. I'm still knowing the lingo, <laughs> still getting to know the lingo. But in Florida, it's actually a really good thing to have. We met a couple of people at the last RV park we were at. We spent $1,800 for the month at that RV park and they were all staying there for free because they had a membership. So I'm like, what? So I started doing some research and right when I was looking to purchase one, they rolled out a brand new plan called the Adventure Package, which is actually a really amazing package because with the original Thousand Trails, you can only stay in the Encore RV parks, I think for, it was like two weeks at a time. Then you have to go to a Thousand Trails park. So it was this whole complicated system, that, which meant you had to move quite a bit. Um, and the parks that you really want to stay at, you can only stay out for two weeks at a time. So with this, for, so that's where another thing I was like, ah, I don't know if that's gonna work for us. But then the new package that came out changed everything. Now it is more expensive. I think it's around 15,000. You can finance it. Um, that's what we chose to do. And I think it's like 340 a month, which is nothing compared to what we were paying for. Our RV is bought around the, uh, the country. So with this one, you can stay at Encore Parks for three weeks at a time, and you can go from park to park, opposed to the original membership where you had to go stay at a Thousand Trails Park in between. If anybody knows what I'm talking about, you'll know what I'm talking about, because it's kind of confusing. I was very confused. But this, this way, we can go down to the Florida Keys, 
and stay at one of the two parks down there for three weeks at a time and then go straight to the other park and we can stay for as long as we want in the Keys, you know, granted a space providing. So if there's space available, we can get a spot and it's 20 bucks a day opposed to minimum 3,000 a month. So that would have been, I mean, right there, three stays, three or four stays in the Keys pays for almost the whole membership. So for us, that's kind of where we want to be while we're in Florida. We love the water. We want to be over on that tropical vibe and the total island feel. So when we heard about that, we were like, ah, that sounds like it's for us. And it's funny because we met a lot of RVers lately where they have the regular membership, but they do have to do that sort of juggle, move around a lot. And so they're probably interested in getting this package as well. So if you are an RVer and you RV full time, I would definitely look into the adventure package because literally we were spending, I don't know, 18 to 20,000 a year just on RV spots. Uh, and with this package, it pays itself off in like eight months or so, or even less if you're staying in places like Keys where, you know, it's like 35, it could be 3,000 to 4,000 for one month where we like to stay, you know, three weeks to a month at a time in a location. So I'm super excited about that. We just got it a couple of weeks ago and we head down to the Keys in, I don't know, in a month or so and we plan on being there for a few months. So super excited. You definitely want to check that out. All right, so we got a twofer for you on this one. A twofer? The twofer, <laughs> the first fur is to get some insulated cups with some uh... reusable straws because all that ice that you made earlier, you want to be able to keep it cold yes. and make it last the whole day. By the way, the ice that's in here is from the ice maker. Yes, and as we're trying to save the environment and protect mother nature, reusable straws, that's we never want to you know, have that video where the turtle has a straw hanging out of his nose because that's horrible. The kids, Skylar the kids cry every talks time. about that all the time when she sees people using like regular plastic straws. <laughs> she gets very upset. And the last thing that we could show here is these nice lounge chairs. Uh, you always feel like you're gonna fall over at the very end. <laughs> <laughs> but make sure you get some lounge chairs. There's nothing better than to sit out in a RV park or wherever you are in the Bring wild. Them to the beach. The sunset. Yeah, just amazing. Enjoy sunset every once in a while, guys. Oh, so there is one more thing I forgot to put what? in there. The bike light. But we're gonna wait till it gets oh, dark. Oh, I forgot. Okay. We're, you gotta have bike lights. So we have more. Hold up. So we're gonna let the sun go down a little bit here. We're gonna turn on some of our really cool lights, Ooh. show you from the outside. So we're gonna set the mood. Yeah, stick around for that. Let's enjoy the sunset for another time. All right, cheers to trying something new. All right, so as you can tell behind us, we love LEDs, we love lights, we love glowing at nighttime. So we've got a whole bunch of LEDs inside the RV, we've got some bistro lights outside the RV, we've got LED wheels on our bikes. We are just overdone with LEDs. You can't have enough LEDs. We've probably got about 120 feet of LEDs on this RV. So we are all about the LED lights. So this is one of my faves. It's a diffuser nightlight kind of thing. And so it cycles through all these different colors. Right now I have it on the pink. But then you press this little guy, you have your essential oils in there, and then wait for it, wait for it, there it is. Look at that. So you get a little ambiance with your light, and you get the room smelling beautiful with your essential oils. I have in there right now peppermint, so it smells super fresh in here. And yeah, this is definitely one of my must haves. All right, so we hope that all of these RV tips were useful, helpful, you use them for yourself, we know that over the years, these things have been perfect for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, if you have any that you want to use or that you do use, definitely drop it in the comments below. Let yes, us know. Cause please, because we're always looking for new must-haves. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.